Nothing pleases a prominent citizen more than to find his name in the newspaper. And this morning, the chest of a local leader swells with pride as he reads his name in the Wistful Vista Gazette. <laughs> he knew it would be there because he paid for an ad. <laughs> which says, please call Mr. McGee of Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, Molly. Molly, look, here it is, my ad. Right smack in the middle of page 10. What ad, McGee? Well, listen to this. Greatest value in history. Chance of a lifetime. For sale. A rare raccoon coat. <laughs> oh, no. Not your old collegiate coonskin. Yep, the very one. I ought to get 50 or 60 bucks for it, Molly. Oh, McGee. Oh, to tell you the truth, I, I hate to part with that old coat. <laughs> That old coat's full of memories for me, kiddo. Yes, if they haven't fallen out through the moth holes. <laughs> hmm, what do you mean? That's a swell raccoon coat for the shape it's in. And when I wear it, it's even a swell coat for the shape it's in it. <laughs> well, now, if you're still so fond of it, why do you want to sell it? Well, I don't get much chance to wear it anymore. Besides, the last time I had it on, Doc Gamble made a crack that made me kind of sensitive about it. What did he say, lover? He looked at me and he says, Well, we ought to have an early spring this year. I see the groundhog's already out. <laughs> well, that was a natural mistake. Yeah, well, I've had a lot of fun with that old raccoon coat when it was new, though I did have. <laughs> Remember the night I went to your house and left my coat on a chair in the hall and Uncle Dennis came in and saw it? Yes, you remember that? <laughs> Poor old Uncle Dennis. Yeah. He took one look at that raccoon coat, let out a horrible screech, and tried to beat it to death with a beer bottle. <laughs> well, now, <clears throat> Uncle Dennis couldn't see very well. He was having trouble with his glasses, you know. He always did have trouble with his glasses, kiddo. He kept emptying them too fast. <laughs> Well, I better sit down here by the phone. Answers to that ad ought to start coming in any minute now. See that? Oh, McGee, that reminds huh? me. There was a call for you when you went out to get the paper. Oh, my gosh, a customer already. Did you get the number? Yes, huh? yes, I jotted it down for you. Here it is. Wistful Vista 8327. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Give me the phone. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Wistful Vista 8327. Huh? Oh, Okay. Line's busy. I'll have to try later. Say, uh, while you're waiting, dearie, hmm? uh, will you drive me down to the Elks Club? I baked the cake for the ladies' cake thing. Oh, I... can't you take it, kiddo? I'll give you the car keys. Oh, right. no, it's too gooey, sweetheart. Yeah. I'll have to hold it in my lap. Yeah. And another thing, while we're down there, let's return this book you borrowed from the public library two months ago. Did you finish it? Book from the library? Oh, you mean that red book? About two and a half inches thick? Yes. Yeah. I didn't read that, kiddo. No. I had a short leg on my workbench. It was, uh, the leg was... The leg was just two and a half inches short, so I got a two and a half inch book. Well, now we can drop it off on the way back. Come on now, let's get Yeah, going. but uh, what about my phone call? Well, you can call the number from the Elks Club while I'm delivering the cake. Oh, yeah? By George, that's using your head, kiddo. Yeah. That's what I like about you, you think. Er, that's what I like about you. You think. <laughs> well, grab the cake and grab the book. I'll grab my hat. Let's go. Okay. You go ahead and deliver the cake, Molly. I'll duck into Oli's office here and call my raccoon coat customer. Where are they selling the cake? Out in the main lobby. Well, I'll be right back, Terry. We can stop at the library on the way home. Okay, Tootsie. Oh, hi, Ollie. Well, hello, McGee. Come in. Me and Doc Gamble, you finish a game of you and know me. Yeah, you care to play the winner, Bird Brain? The winner? Who? Me. You? Yes. No. Good. Scared? <laughs> Who? You. Me? Yeah. No. Your turn, Doc. <laughs> Guess who you were just talking about, McGee? Who? You. Me? Yes. Oh, cut it out, you. <laughs> I got no time for this kind of fiddle-faddle. I'm busy. Get him. Mind if I use your phone, Ollie? Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Wistful Vista 8327. Oh, still busy, eh? Okay. Oh, gone it. I wish they'd clear that line. 
That's a hot customer, Doc, that I got for my raccoon coat that I got up for sale. Raccoon coat? Yep. You mean you're actually disposing of that mangy doormat with lapels? <laughs> yep. Oh, for the sake of Wistful Vista, I hope you sell it to someone out of town. I've always suspected that thing had rabies. <laughs> you're just jealous. You'd buy that coat yourself if you had a slim fellow like I am's figure instead of a big pot like you are's belly. <laughs> now look, boy of the limber lip, I'd rather walk down Main Street in my bear skin than that coon skin, believe me. <laughs> well, I gotta get back to the office. Oh, hey, you passed the library on your way back, don't you, Doc? How about returning this book for me, huh? Will you do it, huh? Book? Yeah. You've been reading a book? No, I propped up my workbench with it. Thank heavens. For a moment, I thought you were ill. <laughs> well, I'll take the book for you, McGee. Goodbye, Thanks, Ollie. Pal. So long, ah, man. dear old Doc. A solid ton of good, clean fun. <laughs> hey, Ollie, maybe one of your boys would like to buy my raccoon coat, huh? No, it's too old-fashioned, McGee. Yeah? Raccoon coats went out with the flappers. Yeah? The same flappers I went out with. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll call that number again in a couple of minutes. Maybe you better yaw it down so you don't forget it. Huh? Not me. I never forget a number, Ollie. As soon as that 8327 stops being busy, I'll get him. Not 8327, McGee. You called 3287. Huh? I did not. You think I can't remember a simple number like Wistful Vista 8737? 27, McGee. 87. Wistful Vista 2387. Or 8723. I mean, three, three. Eight, three. Two, seven, eight, three. Or seven, three, eight. Dad ratted Ollie. Now look what you meant and made me do. I had it all memorized. And I'm ready to go, dear. Oh, hello, Ollie. Hello, missus. Hey, you're just in time, Molly. What's that number I was calling about the coat? Ollie made me forget it. You wrote it down, didn't you? Oh, indeed I did, dearie. Good. I wrote it on one of the pages of that library book. What? Oh, my gosh. Doc Gamble's already took that book back. He did. Wouldn't you know that rat would follow me up some way? That's the last time I'll ever let that... Well, come on, Molly. Let's get over to the library. I've got to get the book. Get... <laughs> my gosh, look at the books in this joint, Molly. Millions of them. Yes, it's one of the best libraries. I wouldn't mind being the book salesman that's got this territory. <laughs> not so loud, dearie. The lady at the desk there. This library may not sell many books, but the guy that sells them books, boy, can he sell books. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a leaky radiator in here. It's the lady at the desk, McGee. Well, she ought to do something for that cold. She's got a bad wheeze. <laughs> Come on, let's ask her where that book is. Hey, sis, we're looking for a book. Sir, please, you're disturbing the other people here. Oh, I'm sorry, sis. They're only reading, though, anyhow. <laughs> a friend just returned a book here for my husband, miss, and he'd like to take it out again. What is the book's title, please? Well, now, I don't know the title, sis, but I can, ex- I can describe the book for you exactly. It's two and a half inches thick with a red cover and a rosebud pressed in it with a phone number wrote on it that I got to have to sell my raccoon coat to. Where is it? You don't even know the author's name? No. No. But the rosebud was a Cecil Bruner. I know that. <laughs> Does that help you, Sip? No, I'm afraid I can't assist you. The book has undoubtedly been returned to the shelf. Oh, you can't assist us, eh? Well, by George, this library belongs to the taxpayers. And I'm a taxpayer through the nose. <laughs> I want two and a half inches of service with a red cover on it. That's what I... Shh. Quiet, please. Sorry, miss. McGee, the lady is no magician. This place is full of red books. Well, I'm going to find that one with a phone number in it if I have to measure every book in the joint. You got a ruler I can borrow, sis? Quiet, please. Here, you may use this ruler. Okay, what's that rack of books over there? That is the Kipling section. Oh? Beyond it is the Stevenson section, and then comes the Dickens section. I wonder which section I ought to go to first. I suggest that you go to the Dickens. (laughs) That could be a crack, but I'll ignore it. Start measuring. You know, McGee, I think you're going to an awful lot of trouble myself. With a hundred bucks at stake for that coat? 
Nothing is too much trouble. Oh, hey, wait. There's a red book. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Let me see. The Life of Henry VIII. Yeah, let's measure that. Oh, that's four inches. See if you can find a red life of Napoleon. He was smaller than Henry. Maybe he's got an inch and a half less life. Hmm? Well, now, let me see. Wait, there's a man there with a pinkish-looking book, dearie. Oh, it's Mr. Wimple. Oh, hi, Wimp. Hello, folks. Uh, do you visit the library often, Mr. Wimple? Oh, yes, Mrs. McGee. And I'm so glad I came here today. I found a new bird book. <laughs> on the trail of the quail. You still a bird watcher, Wimp? Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Just last week, I went into the woods and watched and watched. I didn't want to frighten the birds, so I disguised myself as a tree. <laughs> well, how in the world could you do that? Oh, it was very simple. I wore a green suit, held a pine cone in one hand, an acorn in the other, and had some ivy wound around my neck. And I just stood mousy quiet. <laughs> I bet that rig didn't fool the birds. Oh, it was very convincing. Yeah. A woodpecker even put quite a nasty gash in my head. <laughs> he certainly went to a lot of trouble, Mr. Wimple. Oh, it was worth it, Mrs. McGee. I was right beside a little pool where the birds come to bathe. Oh. <laughs> I'd watch for a while and then hide my eyes. Well, why did you hide your eyes? Well, some of the birds were females. I couldn't watch a lady taking a bath. <laughs> Spoken like a gentleman, Wimp. Hey, look, boy. Would you do me a big favor? Well... Good. I got an ad in the paper to sell my old, my old raccoon coat, see? And I be, may be getting a call on it. Now, here's the key to our house. Run over to the house and take down the messages for me, will you? Oh, get there? I'll be glad to, Mr. McGee. Fine. I'll borrow a book here and take it along to read. I'm going to stay away from home all day today, anyhow. Oh, are you, Mr. Wimple? Doesn't your wife miss you, though? Very seldom, Mrs. McGee. I've got lumps all over me. <laughs> well, here's another red book, dearie. Whip out the ruler. Okay. No, that's two and a quarter inches. Well, we're closing in. Another quarter of an inch and we'll have Oh, hello, Molly. Hi, pal. Oh, hi, Junior. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. What brings you to the library? I'm reading up on Abraham Lincoln, Molly, the great emancipator. He's an idol of mine. Mine, too. Someday I even hope to be known by a title like the one he has. The great emancipator? Yes, I hope my work for pet milk may someday earn me the title of the great evaporator. <laughs> This boy has no shame. <laughs> of course, <laughs> everything I see around this library reminds me of pet evaporated milk. Anyhow, well, everything you see every place reminds now me. Now you take that shelf of books right there. Yeah? All the titles in a neat row, like the labels on cans of pet milk. The book I'm looking for is a red one, Junior. For instance, you take this book right here. Which, by an odd coincidence, happens to be a book of recipes. How thick is it, Junior? Because of a two and a half inches. Yes, thick sir. This book of recipes reminds me of pet milk. And why? Who asked? <laughs> because there's a recipe on every large can of pet milk these days. Uh -huh. A husband tested recipe for one of those great Mary Lee Taylor dishes that are so nourishing and so delicious. Yeah, but print it right on the label. Well, measure that book he's got, Molly. Because if it's two and a half inches, I did measure it, McGee. It's too tall. Yes, sir. Two tall cans of pet milk oh. means two terrific recipes. Oh. And pet milk, that good, sweet country milk made double rich by evaporation and packed with nourishing hey, 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 vitamins. Hey. Look, uh, Milky. Yes, pal. You know that beautiful old raccoon coat of mine? I've got it up for sale, Junior. And if you'd like it, I'll make you a good deal, boy. Me? Oh, oh, oh no, not me, pal. I'm allergic. Really, Mr. Wilcox, allergic to fur? No, I'm allergic to his deals, Molly. <laughs> As the dude said when he's selling the cactus for the second time, I've been stuck before. <laughs> so long, kid. Har, har, har. Look at him smirk, just like he said something funny. 
Well, he'll wipe that sneer off when I sell my raccoon coat to some rich college fullback. Hush, dearie. The librarian is looking at us again. So what? My gosh, this is a public building, and I'm as public as anybody. Oh, oh look who's coming, Molly. Oh, hey, hi, Alice Trivia. Hello, McGee. Molly. Hello, Mr. Mayor. I was clear across the room there, McGee, but I thought I recognized that voice. Yes, I have got a distinctive voice, Latrev. Always have had. A loud one. Yep. It's what they call the timber, the voice that's different. Yes. It's full of knots. <laughs> what are you doing here, Latrev? Picking up your cut of the library fines? How do you split them fines? No, no. No, McGee. I came in to get a book. Oh, I'll bet you read a lot, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I do, Molly. I spend most of my evenings at home with Virgil, Dante, and Homer. What do you guys do, play poker? <laughs> no, McGee, those are all great authors. No, I never heard of them. If you want my idea of a great writer, La Trivia, it's Hemingway Savage, the guy that wrote the case of the gory gun mall. <laughs> How nauseating. <laughs> under your arm there. One of the classics, I suppose. Uh, um, yes. Hey, that cover looks familiar. Hey, let me see that. Grab it, Molly. No, 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 please, please. please. I got it, I got it. (laughs) Let's see. The Case of the Vicious Vampire by Hemingway Savage. (laughs) How nauseating. (laughs) Well, all right, McGee, you've got it. I, too, am a Hemingway Savage fan. Heavenly day. My gosh, Latrive, I'm proud of you. Mind stepping over here to the window, boy? Why, McGee? Because I'm going to look at Latrive in a different light from now on. (laughs) Say, by the way, how did you like his last book, Latrive? The Case of the Giggling Corpse. (laughs) One of his best. Yes, sir. I found the use of a concrete mixer as the murder weapon quite refreshing. Yeah, How about the case of the half-dead halfback? Good, good, but he went a bit too far. You mean you thought seven shootings, seven stabbings, four poisonings, and two people shoved off the Washington Monument was too much? No, 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 that was all right. But when he blew up the Rose Bowl with 80,000 people in it, I felt that he was reaching a little. Well, I love this literary talk, the trip, but i got to find a book with a phone number in it here because I'm selling my raccoon coat to... Gentlemen, oh. keep your voices down, please. About that book you wanted, sir, I have a clue. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I've just discovered it was taken out again this afternoon. Oh, my gosh. You hear that, Molly? we got to get it, sis. Who's got... If you'll just keep quiet. Yeah, but come on, sis. The book. The book. Who took the book? Quiet! <laughs> Take it easy, lamb. (laughs) People are trying to read in here. Heavens, what about... Oh, dear, I... Now, now. Come clean, sis. Who took the book? A Mr. Wallace Wimple. Wally Wimple? Oh, boy, he's at our house with us. He's got the book there. Oh, good. Come on, Molly, let's get out there. My gosh, the way all them people are looking at us, you'd think I was making the noise. That dame will never make a librarian that way, disturbing everybody when they're trying to read. Come on. Come on, hurry, Molly. Let's get home and get that book before something else happens to us. I hope whoever phoned this morning hasn't gone and bought a rare raccoon coat someplace else, that's all. Oh, I'm sure they haven't, dearie. They'd never find one as rare as that one. I wonder if I ought to ask 200 bucks and haggle with them a while or just settle for a flat 150 without quibbling. Well, frankly, dearie, if the Board of Health doesn't condemn it first, I just... Hello there, kids! Hey, wait up! (laughs) Oh, hi, old-timer. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. Going our way? Tag along if you want to, boy. We gotta hurry. Big deal. Okay, kids. Like I was saying to my girlfriend, Bessie, just today, Bessie, I say! Hey, how is Bessie these days? You two still romantic? Oh, we're closer together than two pigs in a small trough, daughter. <laughs> I just come from the railroad station, went down there to meet her. Oh, has Bessie been away? Nope. I just meet her down there for the smooching, kids. <laughs> 
not so conspicuous at the railroad station. <laughs> That's a cute idea. I was waiting for a gate, too, this morning, daughter. Yeah? All at once, here she come, all dressed up, looking so pretty, I hardly know her. <laughs> oh, really? Bessie, I says, you look like a different girl today. Then I give her a big kiss, and everything went black. <laughs> what happened? Mm. Turned out it was a different girl, Johnny. <laughs> Big fat brunette named Mabel Roggins. Says on her trunk that I fell over when she swung on me. Oh, my goodness, I hope you explain things to her. <laughs> yep, we struck up quite a conversation, me and Mabel. That's so. Turns out she's a single girl, has her own car, no boyfriend, and lives at 302 North. 302 North? North what? That's as far as I got, daughter. Bessie walked up just then and everything went black again. <laughs> Gosh, did she slug you, too? Yep. I never did find out where Mabel lives, but this is where you live, kid, so run on in the house. I'll see you later. See you later. Come on, Molly. Let's get that book from Wimple and find that phone number. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, at last. Well, Mr. and Mrs. McGee... Hey, Wimp, give me that book. You know, the red book that you picked up at the library, two and a half inches thick. Quick, boy, the book. There's the... a phone number in the front of it, Mr. Yeah. Wimp. Oh, all uh, uh, right. Here you are. Ah, uh, good boy, Wimp. Now, let me see. Ah, uh, here we are. Wistful Vista 83. Hello, operator. Give me Wistful Vista 8327. Yeah, that's it. Hello? H- hello. Wistful Vista 8327? Yes. Oh, this is Fibber McGee. Somebody there called me this morning, and I was out, so... Oh, yes, Mr. McGee, I phoned you. Ah, at last. Now, about this rare raccoon coat of mine, sis, I'll take... Raccoon coat? Huh? I don't know anything about a raccoon coat, Mr. McGee. I phoned you this morning about a book you had out. A book? A book? A book? A book? (laughs) Hey, who am I talking to, anyway? This is the Wistful Vista Public Library. Oh, this is ridiculous. Ladies and gentlemen, a serious shortage exists today in our steel industry. A shortage of iron and steel scrap, without which our steel mills cannot meet the needs of the nation. The scrap metal we housewives have won't do it this time, girls. It's the heavy metal that's needed. This is an appeal to industry and to farmers to search out every pound of heavy metal and see that it gets to your nearest scrap dealer. It's vitally important to steel production. Remember, every one of us has a steak in steel. Right. I had a steak last night that tasted like it was made out of... McGee. Okay. 